Okay, turning once again. Uh, still in security management, still uh, really in, in personnel security, uh, but uh, revisiting uh, security awareness, training, and education. And um, concentrating, I think, on uh, some of the aspects in, in awareness, because that's probably what you're going to be primarily doing. Uh, of course, in, uh, in terms of education, um, y there is your own education. Uh, you are also uh, going to be at least attempting to educate senior management um, as you can and in areas of, of their interest, uh, particularly in terms of risk management uh, and the assessment and analysis thereof. Um, and, uh, of course, issues of, of policy, of, of vital importance. Uh, training, um, you, you know, you're managing the, uh, the training of uh, your employees, the, the people that you manage, uh, so that they have the proper training for their roles and responsibilities, their specific tasks and functions. But... Uh, Awareness covers pretty much everybody. Uh, there is going to have to be uh, security awareness throughout the organization uh, at all levels, uh, from you know senior management right on down to the line workers. Um, you know there there is uh, an awareness that goes along with uh, being part of senior management as to the importance of security. Uh, so a, a number of areas there. Now, um, one of the interesting and sometimes frustrating aspects of uh, awareness, security awareness and, and the training in that regard is that people aren't, um, you know, they, they don't see it as effective. They don't see it as important. Um, and I, I hear over and over again people saying uh, security awareness doesn't work. Well, no, security awareness doesn't work perfectly. There's always going to be, you, you know, you conduct the security awareness training, uh, you conduct the security awareness campaigns, and all that goes into that. And... Uh, you know, people don't pay attention, people uh, slough it off, people don't learn the lessons that you are imparting or learn them improperly or only partially, you know, whatever. Yeah, there, there are failings. It's, it's not perfect, it's not 100%. But it is really very startlingly effective. And uh, I am, uh, in a sense, thankful for the pandemic for an illustration of this. In, uh, the, during the pandemic, uh, everybody had a hard time of it, but we in British Columbia had a secret weapon. We had Dr. Bonnie. Dr. Bonnie had Henry, the chief medical health officer, and she very consistently took a position with regard to uh, mandates and, and policies in regard to uh, the pandemic and, and what would be done, that it was better to educate than to mandate. And so we did not have uh, as many or as draconian uh, mask mandates, vaccine mandates, closures, uh, you know, what have you. Uh, now, we had some, yes, and a lot of people complained about that. But really, uh, uh, there were, you know, it, it was a very, uh, not completely hands-off, but, but uh, a, a much softer approach than was seen in other venues. But a consistent message, there were the, the daily updates which I mentally referred to as the Dr. Bonnie show. Uh, and there was this consistent messaging, this driving home of 
the the message, the education. Um, again, trying to make people aware of what was important in regard to keeping yourself safe, keeping society safe, uh, what had to happen, what, what should be done. Uh, and when you look at the numbers, again, going back to uh, you know our functional and assurance requirements, looking at the numbers, looking at the numbers of deaths, looking at the numbers of hospitalizations, um, uh, looking at the number of people who got COVID, so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, particularly in regard to deaths, it's a nice, simple, you know, single number that people can pay attention to. And uh, you look at our population relative to the rest of Canada, relative to the United States. And the numbers in British Columbia per population uh, were much lower. And you could look at those numbers and you could say, okay, Dr. Bonnie is saving 15 lives per day. Uh, that over a period of several months, Dr. Bonnie was responsible. And you can very easily say, you know, just looking at the numbers, that Dr. Bonnie had saved 5,000 lives over this uh, period. And that was done from the perspective of and, and with an emphasis on awareness rather than draconian mandates. Educate, not mandate. So, uh, just a, a few more things in, in regard to uh, security awareness. Um, security awareness, think of it primarily as advertising. Um, you are repeating. I can, I can remember uh, my late wife, uh, and one time uh, a, uh, we were driving in the car and an ad came on and they were just repeating the name of the company over and over and over again. And she said, that's a terrible ad. I said, no, that's a great ad because you're going to remember that name. So repetition is important in security awareness. You know, have simple themes, important simple themes, and keep repeating them so that people remember that. So think about advertising. Like advertising, you do have to change it up every once in a while. Not necessarily the themes, but the message, the, the uh, uh, tagline that you are putting across to try and drive the message home. You know, advertising uh, that is very clever this year is going to be old hat next year. You do have to change it up. You do have to, uh, you know, pay attention to the fact that you are uh, speaking uh, to people and, and bringing them at least something new. So, speak to your audience. Every level of education, speak to your audience. Make sure you are taking them from, you know, starting from where they are, not where you think they should be. Anyway, uh, we'll take all of that and go on with uh, some more topics about security awareness next time.